All around us is movement. Movement here, movement there. All our lives we've been used to moving around, and objects moving around, just everything moving around in its own way. We know the basic principle. If something goes up, it must come down. We know that an action from us can cause another action in the form of movement. But why? Why, why does this happen? And who realized this? A very special man, Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton was an English mathematician and scientist, who paved the road for physics and science in many ways. He was born in 1643 on Christmas Day to a poor farming family. In school, Isaac was always one of the top students, but his mother wanted him to be a farmer, so she pulled him straight from the school, trying to lead him to be a farmer like she was. Luckily for Isaac, the headmaster intervened and Isaac was soon able to come back to school and later led him to study in Trinity College. Newton was a very influential man. He shaped the way we think of physics today and inspired many people throughout the ages. He famously said, If I have seen farther, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Even he himself knew how great he was, saying that it was practically impossible for him to learn more than he already did. The most popular depiction of Isaac Newton is him reading by a tree, soon being hit in the head by an apple, and then suddenly being struck with the idea of gravity. This might be true, but it was more likely he was just watching some apples fall off trees and not actually being hit by them. The seemingly random apple event eventually led him to develop the three laws of motion, as well as his theory of gravitivity. Gravitivity. Gravitation, not gravitivity. Jeez, dang it, I had that that whole thing going so well, but then I just failed at the end. The last word. Ugh. Newton's laws of motion were three rules written to explain why objects move the way they do and act the way they act. These laws were a huge jump in understanding physics, and because of them, we know a lot more about the world than before. And we have Newton to thank for that. So now, let's see what these laws are all about. An object at rest will remain at rest, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. An object in motion continues in motion with the same speed and in the same direction, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This is the law of inertia. Basically, it means that an object that is still will be still forever, unless it is acted upon by another force, such as a push or the pull of gravity. Also, a moving object will continue moving with the same speed and in the same direction forever, unless it is acted upon by another force, like friction or drag. So let's check this out. If you had a ball in a perfectly flat area and the ball was perfectly still, it would stay still forever, unless something were to happen to it. Imagine the ground suddenly became tilted. The ball would roll down, moving fast in the direction of a downward tilt. Theoretically, if there were no drag or friction, and there wasn't a wall or other object in the way to stop the ball, the ball would roll the same way and at the same speed forever. That means in deep space, if you pushed an object, it would travel through space forever, unless something stopped it or changed its path. The only reason this can't happen on Earth is because of the air particles that create drag for the moving object, as well as friction and other properties. When you throw a ball into the air, it doesn't keep on flying in the same direction. Although that would be pretty cool, on Earth, and pretty much everywhere else with gravity, throwing a ball would cause it to move in the shape of a curve which is shaped by gravity. A 
Okay, I know we were just talking about the three laws of motion, but I really need to clarify this theory before we move on. So as well as creating the three laws of motion, Isaac Newton created a theory of universal gravitation, which explains what gravity is and how to find out how gravity will work. The gravitational force between two bodies is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is his theory of universal gravitation. He states, The moon gravitates towards the earth, and by the force of gravity is continually drawn off from a rectilinear motion and retained in its orbit. If gravity were to not exist, planets and other satellites would just be moving in straight lines. But gravity pulls them, causing a constant orbiting motion. It's lucky for us, or else we would have no moon, the earth would just be floating around, and the solar system would just be a random blob of planets and sun and moons just all by themselves without anything to orbit around. So while it's creating orbits, gravity causes things to fall back down as they always do. No matter how hard I try to fly, I just keep on falling back down onto the ground. Gravity is cruel. However, Noon himself didn't know what caused gravity. Somehow he managed to create a formula for figuring out orbits, but wasn't able to understand what caused gravity. Science is really counterintuitive. I've explained the phenomena of the heavens and of our sea by the force of gravity, but I have not yet assigned a cause to gravity. Quote by Isaac Newton, showing that even he himself knew that he didn't know everything there was to know about gravity, and he really wished to know, but he just couldn't. Today, at least, we know gravity is caused by mass-creating bends in space-time, but for back then, Isaac Newton found out a great deal. Okay, finally, now, back to the laws of motion. Acceleration is produced when a force acts on mass. The greater the mass of whatever is being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate that object. Although this may sound new, everybody knows the second law of motion. Heavier objects require more force to move than a lighter object. Say you had a rubber ball and a bowling ball, and you wanted to move them in the same distance as each other by kicking them. Well, you know, it would be a lot easier to kick the rubber ball than to kick the bowling ball. And it would probably hurt a lot less. But this idea of how much force is required to make an object move is literally the second law of motion. F equals ma. Force equals mass times acceleration. This is the formula Newton developed to calculate the force needed, establishing the second law of motion. Now let's move on to the final law of motion. This is probably the most well-known out of all the laws of motion. You most likely learned it in an applied tech class, or while learning about rockets, or somewhere else. Anyways, it's pretty well-known. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Or, in Newton's very much more complicated words, if a body impinge on another, and by its force change the motion of the other, that body also, because of the equality of the mutual pressure, will undergo an equal change in its own motion towards the contrary part. Those two things that I just said, the first one and the second one, they mean the same thing, just one is a lot more complicated in wording, definitely. Basically, every force, there is a reaction force that is equal in size or amount, but in the opposite direction. This applies to everything. So let's interpret this. The most common example is a rocket. The thrusters have a force which goes downwards, which in turn push the rocket upwards with the same amount of force. Similarly, when someone is walking, they push their feet backwards against the ground, but that pushes them forwards. As a human, 
there's no escape from following regular physics. Whew, dang it, Newton. Thank you.